there is a large cyst in the right lobe. The nodule contains a round solid projection. The cyst seems to belong to peripheral type. The solid part contains hypercogenic granules and lines these correspond partly to non-specific figures partly to connective tissue. Now, we present the U.S. guided aspiration of cystic fluid. On ultrasound guided aspiration cytology the duct of the needle can be seen. After removal of large proportion of cystic fluid it became evident that the lesion is in fact not a peripheral type but a central type cyst. There is a large nodular area in the right lobe and in the isthmus. This is a mixed nodule with echonormal and hypocogenic solid areas. The lesion contains various, large irregular hypercogenic figures. Now, the isthmic part of the nodule is presented, it is a central type cystic lesion. We removed 10.5 milliliter cystic fluid. The tip of the needle is clearly visible. Finally, the U.S. guided aspiration of the hypocogenic solid part is demonstrated. The thyroid is echonormal and contains several hypocogenic and cystic lesions which present various hypercogenic figures. The left lobe has a similar appearance. The lesion presented here, contains fibrosis. There is a central type cyst with an echonormal solid part. Finally, the shrinkage of the nodule is shown on U.S. guided removal of cystic fluid. 1.5 milliliter cystic content was removed. There are several cystic and hypocogenic lesions in the echonormal thyroid. The nodule in the upper pole has a bright hypercogenic granule. The echo pattern of the left lobe remained unchanged. Finally we present a U.S. guided aspiration of the nodule in the right lobe. The duct and at the end of the aspiration even the tip of the needle can be seen. The appearance of the right lobe remained the same. It contains small hypocogenic and cystic lesions. The bright hypercogenic granule is clearly seen in the upper nodule. In contrast with the former examination, the echonormal part of this nodule is thinner while a moderately hypocogenic solid area with hypercogenic granule has appeared within the cystic part. At this time 5 milliliter serous fluid could be removed from the cyst. After the aspiration the echonormal solid rim became much thicker because of the relief of the compression after the removal of the cystic component. There are bright granules in the solid part of the nodule. There is a cystic nodule in the ventral part of the right lobe. 
Most of the hypercogenic granules in lines correspond to non-specific granules and connective tissue. The categorization of the few more bright and a bit larger granules is difficult, they might be microcalcifications. Finally a U.S. guided aspiration is demonstrated. There are several moderately hypocogenic and cystic nodules in the left lobe. The largest spongiform type cyst presents comet tail artifacts, non-specific granules and lines and figures in the back wall and dorsal to the back wall of the small cystic areas. These figures correspond to posterior back wall enhancement. On U.S. guided aspiration first the shrinkage of the nodule is noteworthy thereafter the tip of the needle within a solid area can be seen. Compared with the previous examination neither the size nor the echo pattern of the mixed, multi-chambered cyst have been changed. A U.S. guided aspiration is demonstrated. The thyroid is echonormal and contains several small cystic areas. The largest one has a typical comet tail artifact. There is a minimally hypocogenic nodule in the upper part of the left lobe. The nodule presents halo sign. The thyroid is echonormal and has several small cystic areas which contain comet tail artifacts. The right thyroid is echonormal and contains small insignificant lesions. The pattern may correspond either to an evolving multinodular goiter or autoimmune thyroiditis. The hypocogenic lesions presenting comet tail artifact are small foci of incipient nodules. On the other hand, the lobe contains less well demarcated moderately hypocogenic areas corresponding to thyroiditis. The thyroid is echonormal. There is a cystic lesion presenting comma tail artifacts. Note an unusually large vessel crossing the thyroid. There is a cystic lesion in the echonormal right lobe. The nodule contains typical comet tail artifacts and connective tissue. There are two small cystic areas in the left lobe. Both of them contains one typical comet tail artifact. First, we present a U.S. guided aspiration of a large cystic nodule located in the right lobe. The lesion contained thick fluid and we could remove only a small part of this. As the nodule centers, hypercogenic granules become visible. Now, the nodule after the aspiration. The lesion contains typical comma tail artifacts and several granules without the specific tail. There is a cystic nodule with a moderately hypocogenic solid part at the periphery. There are numerous hypercogenic granules mainly in the lower solid area but even within the cystic part, as well. The numerous comet tail artifacts mimic starry sky phenomena, a term restricted to microcalcifications. The removal of 2 milliliter cystic fluid is not presented. Now, we demonstrate a U.S. guided aspiration of the solid part. This is a central type cyst with an unusually high proportion of comma tail artifacts within the solid area. These granules not always show the dorsal tail.
The hypokagenic nodule contains multiple hyperkagenic granules. Part of these granules has dorsal tail which proves the presence of comet tail artifacts. Several similarly bright granules lack the typical tail, therefore the possibility of simultaneous presence of punctate echogenic foci, that is microcalcifications, cannot be excluded. Nevertheless, in such cases it is more likely that granules lacking dorsal tail are in fact non-typical forms of colloid crystals. Two U.S. guided aspirations are demonstrated, the tip of the needle is clearly visible at both attempts. The thyroid is echonormal and contains multiple small hypokagenic cystic lesions and a moderately hypokagenic area, as well. The pattern is closer to an evolving multinodular goiter than to an autoimmune thyroiditis. There are typical comma tail artifacts within the cystic areas. The left thyroid presents a similar echo pattern. A large cystic lesion occupies great part of the left lobe. The lesion contains amorphous, thick hyperkagenic figures which divide the cyst into smaller areas. The figures are located dorsal to the cystic areas, within or dorsal to the back wall, and are caused by posterior acoustic enhancement. Now, we present the first part of U.S. guided removal of 22 milliliter yellow cystic fluid. There is a small, moderately hypokagenic lesion with coarse calcification in the ventrolateral part of the right lobe while a large cystic lesion occupies the medial two-third of the lobe. Next to the lower pole of the cyst there is a solid area with numerous hyperkagenic granules. Now, the solid area with the intranodular granules after the removal of 6.5 milliliter brown fluid. The vascularization is not specific. The hyperkagenic granules fully correspond to microcalcifications. There is a moderately hypokagenic nodule having cystic areas. Beside back wall cystic figures there are punctate echogenic foci within the solid part of the lesion. The nodule in the left side of the isthmus presents synchronous lines and granules which are partly related to cystic areas. The left lobe has multiple lesions which also presents both echogenic lines and granules. The hypokagenic nodule in the lateral part of the right lobe has synchronous echogenic lines and granules which are presentations of connective tissue. The more hyperkagenic granules belong to the punctate echogenic foci group of echogenic figures. There were two nodules in the right lobe, both of them with suspicious presentation. The ventral one contained numerous microcalcifications, while the dorsal had irregular borders. Lobulated margins. Both lesions presented type 3, irregularly increased vascularization. There is an enlarged lymph node above and lateral to the thyroid. The lymph node also contains microcalcifications, but does not an intact hilum. A large cystic lesion occupies almost the whole right lobe. This is a central type or spongiform cyst. In the lower pole or next to the lower pole there is a cap-like hypokagenic lesion having numerous microcalcifications and less bright non-specific granules, too. Longitudinal scan reveals that the hypokagenic nodule is located outside the larger cyst. The vascularization of this area is irregularly increased.
The lesion in question has sharp but lobulated margins. The bright hypercogenic granules have no tail, they correspond to microcalcifications. Finally a U.S. guided aspiration is demonstrated. The tip of the needle is clearly visible. The presentation of the thyroid has not changed since the previous examination. Note the lobulated margins of the lower hypocogenic nodule. Two U.S. guided aspirations are demonstrated. The tip of the needle is clearly visible within the nodule on both attempts. The thyroid is minimally moderately hypocogenic and contains smaller and larger discrete areas. The pattern corresponds to autoimmune thyroiditis. The left lobe has a similar appearance but there is a discrete lesion with a different echo pattern in the lower part of the lobe. This lesion is more hypocogenic, presents numerous microcalcifications and is not well demarcated. One of the three successful aspirations is demonstrated now. The tip of the needle can be easily identified. The thyroid is composed of pseudolobules. There is a hypocogenic nodule in the lower pole of the right lobe. The nodule displays the so-called starry sky phenomenon which is caused by the numerous microcalcifications. Note the irregular shape of the lesion. The nodule presents an irregular, type 3 vascular pattern. A large cystic nodule occupies almost the entire lobe. The solid part contains microcalcifications. We had to reset the depth in order to visualize the dorsal part of the lobe. This is a peripheral type cyst. The angle between the projection and the flat area of the solid part is acute. There are several additional small cystic lesions. The solid part of the lesion is minimally moderately hypocogenic. One of the U.S. guided aspirations is demonstrated. The patient had suffered from fluctuating hyper and hypothyroidism for two years. The thyroid is moderately hypocogenic and contains several more hypocogenic areas without any significance. However, there was a suspicious lesion in the dorsal part of the left lobe. The lesion presented microcalcifications and a type 3 vascular pattern. A U.S. guided aspiration from the small lesion can be seen. There is a moderately hypocogenic cystic nodule which contains numerous bright hypercogenic granules. These partly correspond to microcalcifications. The thyroid is echonormal. There is a hypocogenic lesion with irregular borders. In contrast with de Quervain's thyroiditis, the borders are not blurred but relatively sharp, puzzle-like. The vascularization is decreased. The right thyroid is echonormal and contains several discrete lesions with different echogenicity. Neither of these has clinical or oncological significance. The pattern corresponds to an evolving multinodular goiter. The vascularization is not specific. There is an irregular, mixed solid cystic nodule in the upper part of the left lobe. The nodule presents relatively large hypercogenic granules. These may correspond partly to group of microcalcifications next to each other, partly to coarse calcifications.
There are multiple lymph nodes lateral to the left lobe with an echo pattern similar to that of the thyroid nodule. The nodes display cystic degeneration and hyperechogenic granules. The thyroid nodule and one lymph node present a type 3 vascular pattern, while another node does a type 1 pattern. Finally a U.S. guided aspiration is demonstrated with the tip of the needle in the solid part of the lesion. There is a moderately hypocogenic nodule in the ventral part of the left lobe. It is evident on the presence of acoustic shadow that the lesion contains coarse calcification. The lesion has numerous other relatively large granules which are difficult to group into one or another subtype. We targeted different parts of the nodule on U.S. guided aspiration. The tip of the needle is clearly visible. A large moderately hypocogenic lesion occupies almost the entire right lobe. The lesion presents coarse calcifications, similarly echogenic lines and granules. The origin of the more bright punctate granules is ambiguous, they might correspond either to connective tissue or to microcalcifications. A rare synchronous tumor is shown. Papillary cancer was found in the right lobe in the hypocogenic nodule displaying microcalcifications. The patient harbored medullary cancer, too, which was located in the left thyroid. There is a hypocogenic nodule with microcalcifications in the upper lateral part of the right lobe. The lobe contains another larger, minimally hypocogenic lesion in the dorsomedial part. A hypocogenic nodule with patchy, hypercogenic areas occupies almost the entire left thyroid. These hyperechogenic, cotton-like structures correspond to amyloid. Two U.S. guided aspirations from the medullary cancer can be seen. The tip of the needle is well seen. Two aspirations are demonstrated from the papillary cancer in the right lobe. On the first attempt, only the duct and the movement of the needle are clearly visible, while on the second attempt, even the tip of the needle is seen. There is a hypocogenic nodule in the ventral part of the right lobe. The nodule contains relatively large hypercogenic patches without acoustic shadow. These correspond to amyloid deposits. The borders of the lesion are irregular. The vascularization is not specific. There is an irregular, hypocogenic lesion in the right thyroid bed. The lesion contains moderately hypocogenic ragged tissue and smaller and larger hypercogenic figures. There is an irregularly shaped hypocogenic lesion with central echonormal areas and hypercogenic figures. There is a cystic lesion in the lower part of the right lobe. There are three discrete hypocogenic lesions in the left lobe. The central one is a granulation around surgical thread. Note the hypocogenic rim around a central echonormal part having hypercogenic granules. As a rule, a granulation is always a vascular. There is a mixed nodule in the right lobe. The solid part is moderately hypocogenic. There are numerous hypercogenic figures within the nodule. On thorough analysis we can reveal that some of the hypercogenic granules has a dorsal narrowing tail while others lack this feature. The former correspond to comma tail artifact while the latter might be either non-typical comma tail artifact or microcalcifications. 
the lesion after the removal of 3 ml brown fluid. The thyroid is echonormal. There are several small cystic lesions without any clinical or oncological significance in the right lobe. There is a much larger cyst in the isthmus. There is a small, moderately hypocogenic solid part in the dorsal part of the nodule. The solid area separates a small cystic part. It's more visible on enlargement that the solid part contains various hypercogenic granules. These are partly nonspecific granules but the larger figures correspond to microcalcifications. Now, an even greater zoom into the solid part. There are several cystic areas in the right lobe. There is a moderately hypocogenic, inhomogeneous lesion in the lower pole of the lobe. The lesion contains tiny granules and a bit larger, bright granule. There is a moderately hypocogenic lesion in the upper part while a multi-chambered cyst with echonormal solid area in the lower half of the right lobe. There are thick hypercogenic lines and granules within the latter nodule. These are probably unusual ultrasound presentations of connective tissue. The thyroid is echonormal and contains a large nodular area composed of several hypercogenic lesions. There is a hypocogenic nodule in the upper and a partly moderately hypocogenic, partly echonormal lesion in the lower part of the left lobe. The former presents numerous bright hypercogenic granules. The lesion has a regular shape and sharp orders. The interpretation of the granules is ambiguous. The bright granules might be microcalcifications while this granule in the upper part of the image might be a comet tail artifact. At the end of the U.S. guided aspiration the tip of the needle became visible. The multi-chambered cyst presents bright hypercogenic figures. Although the categorization of these granules is doubtful, it seems very likely that one of them is a comet tail artifact which stands for that the other figures also belong to this subgroup. The typical comet tail artifact is presented first on slow motion then in an image. There is a hypocogenic nodule in the dorsal part of the lobe. Note the presence of a single punctate echogenic focus. The nodule in the left lobe contains amorphous echogenic figures which are composed of smaller echogenic foci.